Flo, you were here for the very first Shangri-La Dialogue back in 2002. How have you seen the summit evolve since then? It's grown unbelievably, obviously, like Topsy. It, uh, it started off, I think we had uh, 13 ministers and 125 delegates. Um, this year we've just over 600 delegates, 35 ministers. Um, but it's, it's interesting to compare it and to see how it's embedded itself because it was originally conceived by John uh, when he realised that there was no forum where a Southeast Asian, and initially it was Southeast Asian, defence ministers could get together. And uh, the, uh, the IISS, with its unique convening power, he thought it was an ideal opportunity to, to create uh, uh, that forum. Within a few years, it was recognised by um, not only by our hosts, and of course Singapore was the ideal place, and the Singaporeans have been unbelievably helpful. I mean, without it's not only it's not only the position of the island, but if you like the national character. Um, if you're talking about conflict resolution, if you're talking about trying to bring people together, Singapore is the obvious place, and they have been enormously helpful and wonderful partners in this. Um, but the within a very short space of time, it was recognised and acknowledged by, for example, U.S. Uh, uh, defence secretaries, who would say it from the platform that the Shangri-La dialogue had become an essential part of the security architecture of of uh, Southeast Asia. And so it was not simply a conference. It's much more than a conference. And uh, and the uh, its success uh, has led to this, of course, enormous growth. Um, and it, the respect in which it's held. Um, it's quite interesting that uh, for quite a long time, uh, uh, China was very wary of the Shangri-La Dialogue. Um, and gradually, over the years, it came to realize that it couldn't ignore it and it had to be here. And as if you were, in, if you were at the last plenary session, there was a direct um, invitation by um, uh, 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 Defence Minister Ung uh, to China to send their Defence Minister next year. They've been upping the, the presentation, uh, their representation every single year. Uh, another important factor, I think, about the, uh, the, that has led to the reputation of the Shangri-La Dialogue and its reach is that right from the beginning, um, it's performed, I think, two of the major functions of any successful conference. Um, it has been used, recognized by defense ministers, and used to make serious policy announcements. Policy announcements, they've chosen, they've held them back, if they were going to make them, um, to make them at the, at the Shangri-La Dialogue because they realised, I think, that, they, it, that it would get so much more traction um, if they used that forum. But equally, um, policy has been formed at the Dialogue. And one of the first announcements that was made, um, I think it was around the second or third year, was because of concern uh, uh, about uh, the Malacca terrorism and the vulnerability of the Malacca Straits, that the uh, Singaporean um, defence minister got together with his cohorts in the region, and they were able to announce at a at a succeeding uh, um, uh, Shangri-La dialogue the. Uh, combined surveillance of the Malacca Straits. 
which was a very important but significant uh, development. And this has happened, I think, year on year. So, and, and of course, the other very important factor about the Shangri-La dialogue is the possibility it offers for the bilaterals between uh, defense ministers. Um, successive um, secret US secretaries of defense have said to me on numerous occasions that the Shangri-La, and they would come and they would stay for three days, not fly in and fly out. And uh, for example, uh, Bob Gates would say that it was three days at the Shangri-La dialogue because of the bilaterals was worth six months of touring the region. And uh, he couldn't praise it highly enough. And I think, so, if you like, it has a, it stands on a sort of tripod of, of, uh, of achievements. Uh, the bilateral is one, the policy formation is another, the, um, and the policy state using it as a forum to make policy announcements is the third. But I've been coming to this part of, of, of the world since uh, the mid-1990s, and I remember conferences, not the Shangri-La Dialogue, but conferences in Singapore where everybody was very careful about the way they addressed issues for fear of offending the neighbours. It was called the ASEAN way. Now, the ASEAN way meant that everybody spoke a great deal, but nobody got to the point. As you would see from today's discussions uh, and yesterday's, uh, that focused largely on terrorism and then also on the South China Sea and East China Sea issues, nobody's holding back any longer. And yes, the discussions are extremely blunt. But you know, to use the old Churchillian phrase, jaw jaw is better than war war. And from the friction that this produces, that these very blunt talking produces, new initiatives arise because people realize that the various defense ministers realize that while they are in conflict, they also understand how seriously the, their opponents take these issues. And from this, some form of consensus or agreement can hopefully arise. Because surely that is the ultimate goal, that this moves beyond being just a forum to talk about conflict, but a forum to genuinely resolve Precisely. conflict. And that, that is, that's the point I'm trying to make. And after all, the Institute, uh, our, 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 expert, we, our expertise is, is on security and conflict, but our raison d'etre is conflict resolution. And over the past two days of George Orr, <laughs> do you get the sense that that is the direction we're heading in? You mean in Shangri... Uh, well, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, we are... we convene, we try and... Uh, we try and get people together to talk, but you know we don't rule the world, so we can't actually uh, um, uh, make the decisions that would result in in the kind of peace that one would all like to see. Fleur, lovely to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you.